Stacy is in the middle of their push to get into the YA section of the bookstore. They knocked it out of the park when they chose Lee Bardugo to write Wonder Woman Warbringer. And now I am so here for Mary Lou's Batman Nightwalker. Isn't Nightwalker another way of saying sex worker? Shh. Stop your non-believer ways. Anyways. Batman Nightwalker is a Batman origin story post-parental homicide and pre-cape and cowl days. Bruce is just trying to live his life and graduate high school. He's still haunted by the ever-present death of his parents and he's still being raised by Alfred. His two best buds are Harvey Dent and Diane something or other. Of the three of them, I personally would rather this book be about Harvey. To me, he's got a lot more going for him than Bruce. I mean, he's stuck living fairly poor with an abusive father, but his BFFs with a tortured billionaire. But I'm happy that the story follows Bruce, a slightly mopey billionaire who's forced to do community service in a high security mental facility for nonsense reasons. Did we mention that Bruce is forced to do community service in a high security mental facility for nonsense reasons? Bruce is out one night just after gaining access to his trust fund when he hears that the Nightwalkers, the group that have been killing the city's wealthiest upper class, is on the run from the police. Seeing an opportunity to help out the GCPD when it looks like things are going to go wrong for them, he decides to ram his shiny new car into the Nightwalker's getaway vehicle. They slap charges on Bruce for interfering with police business, and they decide that they're going to teach him a lesson by making him mop floors in Arkham Asylum. You know, the asylum for the criminally insane? Because that's where he's going to be going if he doesn't shape up and change his do-gooder ways. Well. I mean, kind of, but they don't have the benefit of foresight. Also, Bruce really needs to fire his lawyer because clearly they are terrible at their job. During his community service, Bruce is led down to the Ubermax security wing and meets their toughest Nightwalker prisoner, Madeline Wallace. She's an 18-year-old girl described as being highly doll-like and extremely manipulative. So Bruce is into her from minute one. Detective Draken is trying to extract information from Madeline but isn't getting anywhere. So when she sees Bruce gets a reaction out of her, she throws Bruce into Madeline's path and then gets pissed when they start getting close. Of course Madeline has some master plan that Bruce plays right into because he's into her and he feels things when he's with her and they have a connection and she's pretty and blah 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 blah. We're a little divided on this novel and that might be because one of us has zero taste in superheroes and the other one is a Batman fan. Yeah, that's it. I liked Alfred and Lucian, I liked him having a crush on Madeline, and I loved the Inspector Gordon cameo at the end. Whereas I thought most of the characters were forgettable, Detective Draken, Madeline, his new best friend Diane, they didn't add much interest to me, and even familiar characters like Lucian and Alfred were just signposts to me that said, hey, this is a Batman novel, okay? Heathen. Suck up. I liked how Lou emphasized how much Alfred is a father figure to Bruce, which makes a lot of sense. And there's this adorable moment where Bruce realizes that Alfred is getting old. I'll give Lou credit though. Bruce is fairly well adjusted considering how brooding you could make him. He has close friends, he's well cared for, sheltered, loved, and while his parents' murders do kind of make him emotional every once in a while, reflecting on them doesn't unhinge him from the loss every 10 seconds. Meaning Lou's Bruce is a tolerable character. And Batman is known for his high-tech gadgets that he pilfers from his company's lab. Lou weaves in a believable level of tech including police support drones, Wayne Enterprises made for the GCPD, and a virtual reality gym where Bruce makes his bat muscles. I love that teenage Bruce wasn't already the ultimate caped crusader, and when it comes down to it, Bruce has no idea how to assault an enemy's stronghold, so it's really just him winging it. Whereas for me, watching Bruce trying to track down the Nightwalkers wasn't the most riveting experience. He gets a couple of hints from Madeline and manages to stumble into the lair once, but the amount of sleuthing that Bruce does is minimal. But he gets the idea about reading people and being super observant from Madeline. Speaking of Madeline, I didn't find her all that intriguing. She's super intelligent and intelligent to the point where she's good at manipulating people, but her one personal characteristic seems to be that she's mysterious. But there are rumors that she's protecting someone, and who she's protecting turns out to be the final boss of the story. But who are they, and what do they want? The night Walkers aren't exactly the ultimate threat to Gotham City. In fact, they're targeting the most capable and visible segment in the population. The rich people. The 1%. 
It's difficult to align yourself with the victims of the Night Walkers, just as it's difficult to align yourself with the Night Walkers. The main reason we care this is happening to the rich is the fact that Bruce has just accessed his trust fund, meaning that he is now one of the targets. But in an interesting turn of events, Bruce does acknowledge his privilege as a rich white kid. Wouldn't it be interesting that instead of just doing teen versions of the characters, they actually swapped ethnicities of the characters or maybe even the genders? Brucinda Wayne, black billionaire heiress with a dark past where her parents were murdered on the streets of the city they were trying to save sounds absolutely fascinating to me. Which, on that note, if you haven't seen the movies with Mikey video, the Batman question, watch that video. Where I think this novel falls down a bit is the fact that it never really brought anything new to the table thematically. Wonder Woman Warbringer had a strong showing of minority characters, letting Diana be the champion of the disenfranchised. Bardugo had themes about being a woman, being black, being silenced, and generally using the figure of Wonder Woman as a vehicle for conversation. Batman Nightwalker had a great opportunity to underscore themes of privilege, philanthropy, community, and the nature of justice. None of those or any other themes were really present. Batman Nightwalker is going to appeal most to the people who are already fans of Batman. It's a nice look at the character from an angle that hasn't been done before. If you're not, a Batman fan, you might find the book a bit slow and kind of unremarkable. I can't say I'm the greatest fan, but there are a lot of choices that Lou made in here that I do support. Like retelling the Batman origin story. She doesn't do that. Thank you. So, if you've been following the DC Icon series, or if you're just a fan of Batman, then give this one a read. Thank you for watching our review, guys! Um, if you want to find out exactly what happened in this novel, stay tuned for our spoiler review, and if you liked our video, why not subscribe? Spoilers mask. You should. Bye, the drugs!